Hello Wanderland, Kelly here, out on a bit of a wander this morning um, to try out a new toy that I just got, which is the Canon 14 to 35 millimeter F4L lens. And I want to compare it to my old trusty 15 to 35 millimeter F2.8 L RF lens. See which one pros and cons, which one I like, which one you like. Let's take a look. Starting out this morning at Sailor's Creek Battlefield State Park, uh, which is another one I can check off my Trails Quest list here in Virginia. I've been to this park before once, um, but it's been a while and I hadn't been here since I started on the Trails Quest. So I thought I would come and do some of the trails. There's a few trails. Um, as the name implies, this is a battlefield park. So where I am right now is known as the Hillsman Overton House, I believe. Um, and it was used during the battle as a hospital by the Union forces. Um, Sailor's Creek was actually basically the last battle of the Civil War, um, at least in this area. General Lee and his Confederate forces were in retreat from Richmond, heading uh, to get resupplied and meet up with the Army of Tennessee in North Carolina. Um, but here is where they met Union forces and ended up a pretty significant defeat for the Confederates. I think eight generals were captured, 7,000, 7,700 troops were captured or lost, um, and it basically precipitated Lee's surrender at Appomattox Courthouse three days later. So that was in April 1865, of course. So I enjoy Civil War trivia, history, and battlefields. Um, and this is an interesting one, of course, being such a contributing factor to the end of the war, which was a good thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, come out here to do some of the trails, take a look around, try out these two lenses. So I feel like a little backstory is needed on this lens comparison. Um, so when I got my first mirrorless Canon camera, which was the R6, uh, my intention at that point was to just use my EF lenses with the RF to EF, EF to RF adapter. Um, and one of my favorite lenses on my EF cameras was my Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter f2.8. Used to shoot ultra wide quite a bit and do a lot of HDR back in my DSLR days. Um, but didn't take long before the adapter I felt was too bulky and too inconvenient and I forgot it a time or two. So didn't take long before I started buying RF lenses. And one of the first RF lenses I got was this 15 to 35. Um, f2.8, which is a fantastic lens, of course, being part of the, the holy trinity of RF lenses, as it were. Um, it's nice and sharp, well built, of course, all the L bells and whistles, um, but it's a little big and a bit heavy. So I found I haven't really hauled it around as much as I might. Um, and I started looking at the 14 to 35 millimeter f4L since I got the 24 to 105 f4 and love it. Um, so the, the extra millimeter on the wide end, smaller and lighter, seems just as sharp as far as I can tell um, from reviews. I haven't shot it much yet myself, which is why we're out today. So yeah, thought I would kind of do some side-by-sides with the two lenses, um, show you what you can get with each, talk about the pros and cons, and we'll go from there. So I'm going to roam around here. I saw some flowers I actually want to shoot with the macro, but I'll get them with the wide angles too, just to to show what they can do from a macro perspective, because that's important to me as well. So yeah, let's get on with it. So macro, I mentioned specifically because the 14 to 35 millimeter actually has a significantly better um, maximum magnification than the 15 to 35. It goes to 0.38x, I believe, where the 15 to 35 only goes to maybe 0.28. I'll clarify that in subtitles. Um, but yeah, I like these little fuzzy flowers here. Um, so I'm just gonna, I took some with the 100 millimeter macro, which I brought along as well. Um, but I wanna take some with both of these wide angles and let you see what that looks like. Check it out. <laughs> How close can we get? Yeah, this thing focuses this is the 14 to 35 I have on right now. Focuses to about 0.2 meters, which I think is maybe nine inches. And that's from the sensor, of course. So um, 
just a couple inches from the front of the lens. And we'll swap and take a look at what that looks like. One review of this particular trail that I'm on was like, it's just a walk around a field. <laughs> and it kind of is, but uh, this time of year anyway, it's a nice field. Lots of good flowers for macro, so that's what I've been doing some of. see the hospital house up there on the hill. It's not bad. But as far as uh, why we're really here, so far, and keep in mind so far I'm just looking through the viewfinder and taking shots, right? Um, but so far the I'm finding that the 14 millimeter on the 14 to 35 is really not that much wider than the 15 to 35. I kind of thought it would be a little more significant, you know, one millimeter at that um, wide of a focal length is not a 10% increase, but close to it. So I kind of expected it would be a bit obviously more wider, and so far it's really not. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but uh, yeah, I just expected a little more width for some reason. But anyway, Onward we go. <laughs> Sunny day so far. <laughs> Another review of this trail that I saw said it was very buggy. And that also is true. So far they don't seem to be biting insects for the most part, but they're definitely all up in my business. <laughs> uh, so I'm on the final stretch here, the home stretch back to the hospital house, and that'll be the end of this particular trail. While I'm talking about things that bug me, let me throw this out there. I was really used to the EF lenses rear caps going on basically any way you tried. There were multiple ways you could get it on. So it wasn't an issue. With RF, it only goes on the one way. You've got to line up that little line on the cap with the red dot on the lens. I find that annoying. <laughs> Makes it harder to do one-handed or, uh, you know, in the dark or not looking. <clears throat> I don't know why. They went that way. Just one of those things that bugs me. Like bugs. Okay. Trudging onward. All right. Next trail here at Sailors Creek Battlefield State Park. The Custis Lee Trail, which I think it's going into the woods here, so it should be a little more, a lot more shady and cool. This is nice. Looking around here, this uh, this was the main battlefield area. Very hilly. It was April, so it wouldn't have been this overgrown, I wouldn't think. Might have been farmland at the time. I think it was. Actually, the house I was at was uh, a farmhouse that was kind of commandeered as the field hospital at the time. I'm hearing a lot of birds. So I pulled out my Merlin app to identify. I've got killdeer, bobwhite, yellow-eyed vireo, something else interesting. Now I forget what it was, but hopefully they're in the woods and I'll see them. Um, I guess you could say I've got the F4L Holy Trinity with me today. The 14 to 35, the 24 to 105, and this one, the 70 to 200 F4. I had the EF version of the 70 to 200 F4L. Loved it. Sharp. Excellent. Never had the 2.8 version, but never felt like I needed it, and the size and weight difference kind of turned me off. Um, 
and I feel the same, and the price difference, of course, um, feel the same now, really. So uh, the 7200 is great. I don't think, especially on the R5 is what I'm shooting today. So I wanted to show the full frame um, application of the, the wide angles. But anyway, I don't think the 7200 on the R5 is going to be enough for birds, unless they're pretty darn close, of course, but maybe I can crop in. I've got the 100 to 500, but it's in the car. I don't want to haul it around too, so yeah, this is definitely a woodsier trail that I'm starting on here, so we'll head this way a bit and see what we can see. So the trail I was on connected to this trail, which runs alongside the namesake of the battlefield and park, Sailor's Creek. Which is interesting because uh, the park spells it like a s sailor, like a Navy sailor. But other signs around have it spelled differently. S-A-Y-L-E-R or S-A-Y-L-O-R, like it's somebody's name. Which makes more sense. It's not a uh, navigable creek by any means. <laughs> and the uh, Confederate Army had to cross it to assault the Union forces. Or was it the other way around? Anyway. One of the armies had to cross uh, Sailor's Creek. And that's when the battle really started, the evening of April 6th, 1865. So anyway, it is very buggy here. I'm not doing a lot of photography because uh, every time I stop, I get swarmed, of course. And I didn't wear bug spray. I don't really like to wear bug spray. Might have to in the summer, though. I just heard a chipmunk. Anyway, um, okay. This trail will take me back to my car and then I'll go to the next stop. So if I get anything interesting along the way, I'll show you. If not, on we go. <laughs> okay, yeah, so it was the Union forces that crossed the creek, which is over there, and broke through this ridge and met Confederate defenders who had camped and trenched in this area. And the Confederates fired and drove the Union forces back towards the creek, but they had artillery to back them up, so the artillery got in place and kind of made the Confederates scatter, and then the Union could advance again towards the Hillman House, which is off in that direction. Kind of neat. I'm not a huge, well, I am a big military history buff, I guess, but I uh, haven't studied the, war, uh, the Civil War. American Civil War too extensively because I didn't live anywhere near it growing up in Florida. There's not a lot of Civil War history down there. A little bit, but not much. Most of the fighting was in this area um, between Richmond, which was the Confederate capital where I live, <laughs> and Washington, D.C., of course, which was the still the Union and United States capital. So that was the hotly contested zone for the most of the war. <clears throat> so there's lots of Civil War history around here. I need to uh, visit all the various Richmond National Battlefield parks. And then Petersburg, south of Richmond, was another big battle with the crater, which is an interesting story, which I'll save for when I actually visit it. <laughs> so anyway, on the home stretch here, towards the car again, going uphill now, Whew, getting out of breath. So yeah, then on to the next stop. Okay, next stop and last stop. I'm, today's not a full day wander. I want to get home, get lunch and get home. But anyway, um, I say but anyway too much. I've realized that watching my videos. But anyway, <laughs> um, I'm here at Highbridge Trail State Park now. So this one I've been to several times and I've already checked it off on my trails quest list. Uh, but it's a cool place to come back to. The it's a rail to trail park, basically. So it's a linear park. Um, and this is it, the trail I'm on. There's a few side trails, but the center piece of the park is the high bridge, um, 
which was a railroad bridge pre-Civil War. I think it was actually destroyed during the Civil War. But these days it's a pedestrian and bike, bike and hike bridge and trail. So it's pretty neat actually. Um, over here to my left, flip around, there's the trail. Um, see some people who in a tent up there. I wonder if they're selling drinks. That'd be nice. But anyway, over here, and I'm at the Camp Paradise entrance. This was Camp Paradise over here. So named because uh, I guess it was a pretty good place to be stationed if you were a Confederate soldier guarding the bridge. Um, not much action in the last days of the war until that final run up to Appomattox. And I guess there were some um, folks who lived nearby who treated the soldiers very nicely. So still got earthworks here, got a replica cannon up there. I'll take a quick stroll through here. It's pretty neat. And then I'll go to the bridge. Yeah, might be a shot or two to be had. A little bit of a historical detour here, but uh, most forts, quote unquote, in the American Civil War were basically like this. Earthworks, um, kind of temporary. Not really meant to last beyond the war. So where there are still breastworks like this um, made of dirt, it's pretty interesting. Hearing some birds over there in the trees. What's down over here? Trenches. So basically this fort was um, an artillery emplacement meant to guard the high bridge, which we're coming to. So yeah. Here we are on the high bridge. And I'll show you why it's called the High Bridge. <laughs> it crosses the Appomattox River, which you can see way down there. That midpoint of the bridge over the Appomattox is really the highlight of that part. From there, the trail just kind of continues. Um, so I'm doubling back. There's a little side trail that runs down to underneath the bridge to the river itself. So that's where kind of the money shots here are. I'm gonna head down there. Hopefully I can get something good, compare these lenses a little bit more. So far, so good on that score, I think. I, as always, once I get back and edit everything, I'll make some more conclusions about sharpness and whatnot, but uh, yeah, so far so good. I think I already said that. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. That's pretty high. So the original high bridge actually ran along these brick stanchions. That was the one that was here at the time of the Civil War. And then I think when that was destroyed, they built a two track affair with these steel pillars, structures. And then when that went out of service, they put the pedestrian bridge up there. Pretty neat. Just came across this little lady laying eggs. Some kind of river turtle, cooter maybe. Try not to bother her too much. <laughs> Got a couple pictures. Yeah. Okay, young lady, I'll leave you alone now. Nice little beach down here by the river.
and then through the bridge. And up there is the uh, midpoint observation deck where I was. Very cool place. So down here is a spot that gives a pretty good vantage of the bridge. So I'm going to set up here real quick with the 15 to 35 and the 14 to 35. And this will probably be my last pair of comparison images. Um, I think I'll also try, I haven't really done a stitch panorama in this location, so I'm going to give that a try too. And then, like I said, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> going to head out. That's what I get for skipping breakfast to hit the road this morning. But anyway, um, I've enjoyed today so far. I mean, it's almost over as far as this part goes. But yeah, one of my favorite places around here, definitely. It's a neat historical nature beautiful spot and i like those <laughs> so starting out with the 15 to 35 here. and i'm gonna do hdr here because i'm in shadow but the sky is out there pretty bright yeah it'll help with the reflections and all and I'll get this vertical. Then swap in the turn off the camera. Swap in the 14 to 35. Line up my lens cap. <laughs> Power back on. Same location. 14 millimeters. Focusing on the bridge, of course. Metering in some of these bushes. Not bad. Now, I'm actually going to use this lens to do my panorama. I'm going to go to... 20 millimeters. That's another difference about this lens, by the way. The um, 15 to 35 is most compact at 35, and when you zoom out to 15, the barrel extends. This one, the neutral position where the lens is extended, uh, retracted, I should say, is about 22 millimeters. And if you go to either extreme, it goes out a little bit, but only like half an inch, so it's hardly worth mentioning. Um, yeah, so I'm going to dial in 20. I'm going to go to manual. Not going to try an HDR panorama today. I'm at F10. Let's dial in ISO 200. Looks like about 1250. This will give me enough sky detail to stick with. Using my level to stay horizontal. And that was six vertical portrait orientation frames. Now I'm going to kind of spray the whole area in landscape orientation and see how that does for me. And again, like I said, at natural bridge, keep your focus and exposure set where they were. I got my head in that one. All right. Hopefully that'll stitch okay. I'm pretty satisfied with that. <laughs> and now this trail I'm on, I was planning to go down to the bottom of the bridge and back up, but this is actually a loop that takes me back to Camp Paradise. So I'm gonna do that. Um, and that's fairly close to the car. So that'll be lovely. All right. I do like this park. So, final thoughts maybe. Um, 
Sharpness, jury's still out. I'll have to get back and look at the photos, of course. But assuming sharpness is similar between the 15 to 35 and the 14 to 35, which I think it should be, um, some final thoughts. So benefits of the 14 to 35, size and weight, obviously. Um, it's smaller, it's lighter. It's just a little more pleasant to carry around. Um, while the 15 to 35 is definitely bigger, heavier, chunkier. <laughs> so there's that. Um, like I said, the 14 to 35, I'm not finding to be all that much wider than the 15. It's only one millimeter, so you would think that makes sense. Um, but I don't know. I expected just a little bit more width out of it for some reason. That's probably my, my fault. Um, F4, F2.8, that's kind of the big distinguishing factor between the two. So if you need the 2.8, then your kind of decision is made. But at wide angles, you really don't get much shallower depth of field at f2.8 than you do at f.4 anyway. So maybe not too big a deal. Um, and now that you can crank the ISO up pretty high on these cameras and not worry about it too much if you're post-processing well, um, yeah, then that's not too big a differentiator either. I like that the 14 to 35 focuses more closely at 35 millimeters than the 15 to 35. So you've got that fairly impressive uh, magnification ratio 0.38x which is really good for a 35 millimeter lens it almost puts it on par with the 35 millimeter macro which goes to 0.5 or 1 to 2 so that's something to keep in mind um, anything else i can mention the filter thread on the 14 to 35 is 77 millimeters which matches the other f4l lenses which is nice and it also matches the 100 to 500 lens so um, that's something to keep in mind if you're building your collection and you want a bunch of lenses that will use the same thread filters and caps. That would be your set. Um, not thinking of anything else right now. So we'll see what the final verdict is on sharpness, which in the images that you've already seen at this point. <laughs> but there's really no such thing as a bad Canon L lens, in my opinion. So... Um, yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. So the question is, am I going to keep the 15 to 35 and replace it with the 14 to 35, or will I keep both? And my answer is probably going to be that I'm going to keep both. Although there's no real reason to <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. I just don't know if I'll, I can sell the 15 to 35 for enough to make it worthwhile rather than keeping it. I don't know. I'll look into that. Um, and it depends on if I like what I see out of the 14 to 35 from the shots today. So I don't feel like I got anything great today. Sometimes I get that feeling. Sometimes I don't. Um, but hopefully it was worth looking at. Hopefully you've enjoyed the ride today. Not too long this time around, I think. Um, yeah. So thanks for watching. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. All that YouTube stuff. Appreciate you spending your time with me as always. And uh, be kind to yourself. Take care of each other. Don't forget to be awesome. Get out and wander. <laughs> Until next time.